One of the world's biggest mysteries of the past is no longer a mystery at all. In fact, it's so common, it's taken for granted by almost all of us. I'm talking about predicting the weather. I mean, sure, back in the day, there were forecasting tools like barometers, weather balloons, and grandma's bursitis in her knees. But accurately guessing when rain, snow, and beach vibes would hit didn't really begin until 1960 with the launch of the first dedicated weather satellite. Now, projecting our climate's mood is taking another leap forward with a new eye in the heavens, tracking the warms and the storms. Here's Albert Lawrence to explain. Forecasting dangerous weather with satellite technology is one thing, but changing the way we see Earth in such diverse areas as agriculture, transportation, and energy from 500 miles up in space is next level science. The Intelligence and Space Division of our sponsor, Raytheon Technologies, developed two Earth observation instruments for NASA and NOAA called VIRS, which are circling the globe now. I made the trip to El Segundo, California to meet lead systems engineer, Julie Montoya, and learn more about a third system headed for orbit soon. What is VIRS? So VIRS stands for Visible Infrared Imaging Radiometer Suite. And fundamentally, it's just a very, very, very fancy camera. And it's looking down at the Earth and taking pictures of vegetation health, forest fires, hurricane detection. So for example, this, this is taken using VIRS? Yes, so VIRS has, we call them bands, 22 different bands. And a band is just a chunk of wavelengths of light that we're capturing, so you can think of them like colors. So there's a red band and a green band. And then we have our day-night band, which is our bonus band that takes all the photons, doesn't care about color or temperature, just wants all the photons. And then you get these nice black and white nighttime images. This cyclone looking thing right here, this <laughs> seems a little bit intimidating. If I see this from Veers, what am I learning? Veers is really good at tracking hurricanes. We've actually been able to increase the amount of warning that we can give people living in the communities that are affected by hurricanes. Forest fires is another big detection, and those also tend to move quickly, tend to move in ways you can't predict, and so it's better to have eyes on them as often as possible. Right now we have two flying, so we are hoping to get a whole constellation of Veers up there so that we can get continuous weather monitoring. Julie invited me to see Veers up close, but its light sensors are so sensitive, even an eyelash falling on one could break it. So we had to put on some bunny suits before we got to walk into the clean lab where all the testing of Veers takes place. Oh. oh, here it is. This is Veers. Whoa. What? This is large, Julie. It, Veers is very large, and the spacecraft it flies on is even bigger than that. That's why we call it a bus. So this is the main event here. This is our telescope. Okay. So the telescope spins around once every two seconds. That's what's grabbing all the photons. And then inside of Veers are all the lenses and mirrors that are going to bounce those photons onto the detector. What's all the rest of this here for? Protection. Protection, <laughs> OK. We're going to set it up into space. And it's a wild environment up there. There's a lot of radiation. There's a lot of sunlight. So we need to protect all of those highly sensitive mirrors and detectors so that nothing breaks. The third Veers instrument is still being tested and will launch into space soon, giving the world another set of scientific eyes to watch over all of us.